Hello from Singapore, I'm Galinda. Today is May 31st and we have reached day 55 of the circuit breaker period. During a recent um, interview with CNN, Amy Cooper said that her entire life is being destroyed right now after Christian Cooper posted on Facebook a video of their encounter in Central Park, New York. The video shows Amy Cooper threatening the very freedom and life of Christian Cooper while claiming that he was the one threatening her life and safety. It arguably shows her having no problems at all, lying even though that lie could have wrecked another person's life. And the video shows Amy Cooper changing the pitch, the tone and the inflection of her voice while she was on the phone with the 911 operator. Her intention was to send out the message that she was being physically assaulted although no one was assaulting her. Every single one of those actions were wrong and Amy Cooper needs to own all of it before she can rebuild her reputation or her career. Amy Cooper is a white woman while Christian is a black man. They encountered each other at the Ramble Woodlands area of Central Park in New York. Two days after this incident, her employer, investment firm Franklin Templeton, fired her for what described as racism. Also on Monday, the same day that Amy Cooper made the false police report, police officers in Minnesota were killing a fully restrained and handcuffed 46-year-old black man named George Floyd. For several days now, we have watched the outcry, the anger, fires, riots and protests on the streets of Minneapolis, St. Paul's and various other US cities in response to this unjustifiable killing at the hands of police officer Derek Chavon and three other officers. But let's not forget Amy Cooper. Let us not allow the sheer amount of suffering and the COVID-19 pandemic to erase or overshadow what Amy Cooper did when she find being attacked by Christian Cooper in Central Park on the same day that George Floyd was killed. Though Amy Cooper has since apologized for her behavior and actions in Central Park, she still describes herself in victim terms. She has stated that her life is being destroyed by others since Christian Cooper's Facebook video went viral. In apologizing, Amy Cooper said, and I quote, words are just words and I can't undo what I did, but I sincerely and humbly apologize to everyone, end quote. What happened in Central Park has far reaching consequences and was about so much more than words. That apology was not enough for her to hold her job at Franklin Templeton and it won't be enough for her to rebuild her reputation and her career either because you first have to own what you did before you can successfully repair it. First, Amy Cooper leaned on white privilege and demonstrated blatant racism. She was the one breaking the rules in Central Park on that day. She was walking a dog in an area explicitly calls out for dogs to be put on the leash. When she was requested to follow this rule, she responded with the kind of superiority and indignation that could only read as white privilege. Then her next move put a race smack dab in the middle of the episode by emphasizing Christian Cooper's race and placing heavy importance on him being an African-American man. She wasn't just calling the police to claim that a man was threatening her. She went out of her way to let Christian Cooper know 
that if he did not stop recording her, she could get back at him by using her privilege to cry out that an African-American man was the one doing the deed. In the video, before actually calling the police, Amy Cooper first threatened to do so already. In doing this, she was letting Christian Cooper know in a most pressing way that she had the power over him and that she could use her race and gender to get over on him. More importantly, that she could truly hurt and even destroy him with just one phone call. Then she followed through on the threat and set things in motions for him to suffer for even daring to request that she put a leash on her dog. Amy Cooper decided that Christian Cooper could indeed suffer for having the audacity to challenge her power and her privilege. The behavior she displayed on the video was clearly racism. I don't know if Amy Cooper is a racist or not, but her behavior on that Monday was indistinguishable from what most people expect from racists. Using nothing but the color of his skin, Amy sent the message that she was superior to Christian and that he needed to step back in his place because he was a black man. That is racist. And that kind of behavior can damage reputations and careers. It also damages a leader's credibility. Second, Amy Cooper conjured up memories of Emmett Till and the white woman who lied on him. The first thing that crossed my mind when I was watching Christian Cooper's video on Facebook was Emmett Till's case. I have watched documentaries on the Till's case in the recent years and the ease at which Amy Cooper lied is one of the most frightening things that she did that day. It was remarkable to see how winning in that moment would cause Amy Cooper to create an entirely false narrative and then do whatever she felt necessary on the call with 911 operators to get officials to believe that lie. Watching this uncomfortable and angry white woman go to unthinkable extremes to make a point is so doggone frightening that it scares me to think of what would have happened had Christian Cooper not had the video recording that day. Emmett Till was a 14-year-old black boy from Chicago. In 1955, his mother begrudgingly allowed him to visit relatives in Mississippi. He was murdered three days after entering a local store when the clerk, a 21-year-old white woman, told people, quote, I was just scared to death of Emmett Till. She claimed that Emmett Till had been inappropriate and whistled at her, among other things. The result was that Emmett Till was kidnapped from the home he was staying, tortured for hours, and then brutally murdered. Fast forward 52 years later, Carolyn Bryant Dunham admitted she had lied and made the story up. She held on that lie and lived a comfortable life and raised her own children. And although she admitted that it was all a lie, she was never held accountable for any of it. She never had to account for the murder or the suffering her lie had created. The encounter between Amy Cooper and Christian Cooper could have ended in a similar horrible way. If there wasn't a video evidence for this incident, how far would Amy Cooper have taken her lie? If there had not been the video, what horrors would Amy Cooper had brought down upon Christian Cooper's life? Third, Amy Cooper weaponized police against Christian Cooper by feigning assault. When Amy Cooper exalted her voice and played damsel in distress on the 911 call, she put Christian Cooper's life on the line. If you have watched the video, 
you may have noticed just how dramatic Amy Cooper became. And to increase the sense of urgency for the police, she changed her demeanor, raised her voice inflections, heightened her cries and animations, all in the attempt to get the police on the scene as soon as possible. She put it all on the line to ensure that the person on the other end of the 911 call would believe that she was indeed being assaulted. She was trying to ensure that the only impression the individual could get was that her life may be taken if he or she didn't act quickly. With her performance, Amy Cooper raised the stakes and increased the likelihood that the police would not just show up at Central Park, but they would show up with guns drawn, ready to cause immediate harm to Christian Cooper. She raised her stakes to make the police be prepared to do whatever they needed to ensure her safety. The very message Amy Cooper was sending to Christian Cooper was that the police exist to serve and protect her. She was sending a loud and clear message that she believes police work for her good and will work for Christian's bad. Her actions left no doubt that she believes that the police will do whatever she wants, even arrest, brutalize or even kill Christian Cooper. She was determined to punish him and all of that was predicated upon the fact that Amy Cooper is white and Christian Cooper is black. And now Amy Cooper is claiming that others are destroying her life? No, that is where she's wrong. She did this. It was her choice. She ruined her reputation and her career. And until she owns part in it, nothing will get better. Thank you, Tarina Allen, for the article.